Okay, everyone. Good evening, everyone. We are 35 Agents Strong. Let's continue to get our agents on this training. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just before I introduce our trainers tonight, I just want to go over, if you're just now joining us, some housekeeping rules. Tonight's training, our Superstars uh, University training, is being recorded. Um, so if you could just make sure that your lines are muted at all times, if you are listening to us on the cell phone, please be mindful of that. I know sometimes on the cell phone, it will unmute itself. If you have any questions about any of the materials, please try to put those questions in the chat or hold those questions to the end, because as I stated, this is being recorded for us to put on our Superstars Facebook page and feed on um, later and throughout our entire time as we're bidding our business. So without further ado, I want to introduce, we have two Power Pack leaders who are going to be training us this evening. The first one is, he is my big bro. That's what I call him. I've been knowing him for the last six, seven years. He has been my big brother. He has been my financial mentor. He has been one of my spiritual mentors as well. He is a six-figure earner. He earned his first six figures at the age of 26 in the real estate industry, but he did not stop there. He has an extensive background coming out of uh, working for the Air Force and other he used to train rocket scientists in the government. So he has an extensive background in all different areas, but now he has taken his talents to the world of network marketing and to the world of FES. And he has bought so many of us along and he has taught us as he's learned and he has poured back into his team. And so that's what he does. He's going to do to us tonight. He is going to train us on personal and professional development train us on how to get out of our own way and how to get put our emotions aside in order to, to do good business. He is a regional sales director here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, which means he is doing $25,000 a month in volume, and he is on his way to executive sales director. I am talking about none other than my big bro, regional sales director, Ivan Brown. Ivan, where you at? I'm right here, Thedra. Thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. Um, again, I, I, I'll send you a cash app for that. <laughs> no, I'm just uh, joking. But uh, hey, thank you for that. Before I get started, I want to just give it back to Thedra. She is, uh, again, like I told you, she's like my sister. Like she said, um, she is doing some phenomenal things. I'm just so, I'm so proud for her and so happy for her too as well. I mean, she's a licensed realtor. Um, she is really kicking butt in this credit business, okay? Uh, uh, I think uh, she just on a trial run was dealing with 73 leads just uh, yesterday and, and, and the other day. And I mean, she is on fire. Um, I'm excited about her getting to the position of sales director uh, prayerfully this month. We're going we're gonna to do what we can do to make it happen. And um, you're going to be hearing great things about Ms. Theidra Dillard. So I'm, I'm very excited to be working with her. So Theidra, thank you for that wonderful intro. I appreciate it. All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about professional development. I, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited about not only delivering to you, I'm excited about uh, the second half of this with uh, with our wonderful uh, executive sales director, Aisha Betancourt. I'm excited to hear about what she has to say on social about social media and stuff, because I, Lord knows I need some help with that. All right. And so Miss, uh, the, the strategist is on the line. The social media strategist, Ms. Aisha Betancourt, is going to be coming soon right after I finish mine. So I'm not going to be long with you guys uh, today. Well, I say that a lot. You know, I'm a preacher, so I get three closings. All right, and so I, I do say that, but, but you know, I'll, I'll try to finish as fast as humanly possible, okay? Um, I am coming, my name is Ivan Brown. Again, like Petra said, I'm coming to you from the great city of Chattanooga, Tennessee, repping the greatest university on the planet, the Howard University Bison, by the way. And uh, so just letting you know that too as well, I got to had to put a shameless plug in for that. And so, um, you know, we, 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 we're on and we like to have fun and we're going we're gonna to just kind of relax and we're going to talk as family today. I'm going to ask that everybody keep the lines muted and save your questions to the end and we will get to your questions. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys at this point. Uh, let's see. Let me share my screen with you really fast. and We can get this training going. All right. Can y'all see my screen? Somebody give me a thumbs up uh, chat box, thumbs up or something. Okay, there we go. All right. All right, very good. Give me one second. Let me put it on. All right. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Very good. All right, guys, we're going to be talking about professional development today. And why, why do we want to talk about this? Because we want you guys to be able to make the switch 
to becoming a professional, okay? Um, a professional business person. Also, we're in the industry of network marketing, so you need to know about becoming a professional network marketer. What Y'all wanna know what gives our industry a bad name and why people call it pyramid schemes and scams and stuff like that. It's because people don't take the time to learn the small set of professional skills it takes to master this industry. You can't, if you wanna be a doctor, if you want to be an attorney, if you want to be a pilot, an engineer, you can't just uh, uh, pay a few hundred dollars and then be considered a professional. No, you'll mess the industry up. And that's what people have been doing. They've been messing our industry up by selling false dreams, by selling get rich quick ID, ideals and stuff like that. And those things are just simply not true. The same professional um, uh, you know, business acumen that, uh, that applies in corporate America and in the business world applies over here in network marketing. You can't come over here in network marketing and treat it like the stepchild of business. Why? Because it is a professional business. It's over $187 billion industry per year. Guys, um, that's, I mean, you, you can't treat that like no punk, okay? And so what we need people to do, we need people to stop to stop um, you know, giving our industry a bad name and get properly trained and handle yourself as a professional. What do professionals do? Professionals dress nice. Professionals carry briefcases. Professionals follow manuals and systems. And, you, and you know, professionals learn their craft. And that's what you have to do as a professional network marketer. Or, or guess what, guys? You're just going to be one of those people out there giving it a bad name and working uh, not because you didn't, get, you didn't make your money back in 30 days. You didn't, uh, you didn't become wealthy in, 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 in 60 days. And you, didn't, you weren't a trillionaire by 90 days. And, and so you quit the business. You can be giving it a bad name, talking about it doesn't work. Yes, it does work. If it works for one person, it works for multiple people. If it's worked for as many people as it's worked for, that means this industry is no respecter of persons. And this business is no respecter of persons. It works if you work it. If you treat it like a hobby, it'll pay you like a hobby. If you treat it like a business, it'll pay you like a business, all right? So let's go ahead and get started with professional development. We wanna talk about making the switch. I want that switch to go off in your brain from going from hobby, uh, uh, you know, Rodney Dangerfield stepchild business to a professional business okay so we want you to make that switch to become a pro okay all right guys amateurs and pros they take two different routes okay they approach business and they approach life from two different angles amateurs approach a business from an employee perspective meaning oh uh, well, how much am i gonna get paid per hour and i just want to know how much i get paid before i do any work that's how amateurs approach business like an employee and so if they don't get a check in their first week or two weeks or three weeks, then guess what they do? They quit because they don't understand the dynamics of what's going on. They don't understand the comp plan. They don't, they don't wanna understand nothing. They don't wanna read nothing. They just wanna you know, show up and get a check. And that's, and that's not what's gonna happen in, in real life and not in just in this business, in any other business too as well, all right? Professionals approach business from an ownership perspective. They take ownership of everything. They take ownership of the business. If a client's not happy, they take ownership. If, they, if, if, if something goes wrong, they take ownership. Even if it's not their fault, they at least take responsibility. All right. And that's what owners do because owners boss up because that's why owners are the boss. That's why they write the checks versus just receiving the checks. All right. So uh, owner, uh, professionals approach business and any other aspect of life through ownership. Okay. Amateurs and pros, they travel two different routes. Okay. All right, they also speak two different languages. Amateurs and pros speak two different languages. They talk differently, all right? Amateurs will say things like, oh, this doesn't work, or, um, you know, I'm not getting enough help, or, you know, the company doesn't do this, or the company doesn't do that. They'll start complaining and nagging and all kind of yik yak or whatever. But pros say, hey, let's figure it out. Let's do what we gotta do. Who's having success? Let me contact them. Because a pro knows that if a person's having success, they know to contact them and have a conversation with them in some way, shape, or form, or at least to, to draw from them in some, in, in some way, in some form, all right? What's the difference between what they're doing and what I'm doing? See, that difference, that, that, that's, that's very different. Pros speak very differently. They have different language than, a, um, than an amateur, all right? So pros and amateurs, they, they basically, basically there's a language barrier. There's, they, speak, they speak two different languages. All right. Imagine going to a foreign country. You know, I remember one time I went to Korea and I really couldn't speak the language. And, um, you know, and there was a language barrier there. And I, ha I had to use interpreters because, you know, I couldn't I couldn't speak their language. And they, a lot of them couldn't they couldn't speak to me. All right. But, um, you know, so there was a language barrier there. And there's a language barrier between amateurs and pros. Right. Amateurs don't understand pros and pros don't understand the mindset of amateurs. All right. Especially once you've developed that pro mindset. 
All right, let's keep it moving. Here's the key question here. Uh, let me go back. I apologize. My screen is skipping. All right, here's a key question here, and I'm going to put you up on some game. It's called the law of difference, okay? There is actually a law called the law of difference, and I'm going to explain it to you right now. It could be summed up. It could be explained in a question, okay? Here's the law of difference. What is the successful man or woman doing that I'm not? You gotta let that. You gotta let that sink in for a minute. I'm gonna let you chew on that for a minute. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put that in your pipe and smoke it. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you chew on that for a minute. What is the successful man or woman doing that I'm not? What's the difference? What's the difference between the guy who's succeeding at FES what, and, and, and me? What's the difference between the people who have come in since the February convention and hit ESD and VP since starting in February and 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 me? What's the difference? That's a question you got to ask yourself. Now, you can't be emotional and, and, and because if you don't like the answer to the question, you have to, you got, you got to, you got to absorb it. You got to, you got to own it. Okay. And so what, what is, I'll answer, I'll answer that question for me. They've been getting up early to me. They've been talking to more people than me and they've been working harder flat out. All right. And so you can, and, and if, and if that's the case for you, you know, here's a, here's a great thing about our business. You can work at your own pace. Nobody is pressuring you to do anything. Nobody's putting any, unrealistic or pressuring goals on you. You can literally, you, you don't work for anybody. You work for yourself. Uh, um, so you don't, you don't have to answer to anybody like a boss. You can work at your own pace. But the question you have to ask yourself as far as whether this is working for you or not is what is a successful man or woman doing that I'm not doing? So you have, so we're talking about the law of difference there. Okay. All right. Let's keep it moving. Here's some questions you can ask yourself. Guys, Questions bring answers, okay? Questions, questions bring answers. And so um, you want to always make sure that you're asking the right questions, okay? And don't be afraid of questions because a lot of times people don't ask themselves the right questions because they're scared of the answer, all right? Stop being scared of the answer and ask yourself the right questions. Is he waking up earlier than me? Is she investing where I'm not? Are they following a system? Is she saying something different? Is he treating people differently? Whose instructions is she following? Is she reading different books? Does he have a mentor? See, all these questions, these are, these are just examples of the questions. These questions bring about answers in life. And so what has to happen is you have to legitimately and honestly look yourself in the mirror and answer these questions. Whose instructions is he following? You got to answer that. Does he have a mentor and I don't? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, they did a study about mental, about um, successful people. There were 300 successful people and 300 uh, unsuccessful people who they did a survey on. 100%, 300 out of 300 had mentors. Guess what they also found on the unsuccessful side out of those 300? 100%, meaning 300 out of 300 of those unsuccessful people did not have mentors. So what does that tell you? You gotta have a mentor. You gotta have somebody that's gone before you blazed a trail, who's been successful, you have to have somebody to follow. Guys, success is, is simple. You know why? Because it's copy. Too many people out here, too many, excuse my language, bastard children out here trying to do things a, in an in a, in a unfatherly way when you got to be fathered or necessarily mentored into success. Success is designed to flow off of another human being's life onto yours. And if you don't, if you have a problem edifying people, if you have a problem, um, you know, it's not, it's not, we're not glorifying no man. We understand that man is, they're not God. We're not glorifying them, but you've got to understand for sure that if a person's successful, their life is working, they got, they got, they got great morals and family values. And guess what guys, you got, you got, you got to look at following them. If they're, if they're successful in this business, you got to see what they're doing. Okay. So that's, that's just, that's just real talk guys. All right. So let's keep it moving. I'm almost done. First closing. All right. So what do pros do? Pros do things that just simply work. They do things that those who are unsuccessful don't do. All right. What are some of those things? All right. Here's some things that pros do. And these are just five. These are not the entire five. These are just five things that pros do. Pros follow a system. They follow systems. Okay. They don't try to always reinvent the wheel and that type of thing. And yes, they may come up with something on their own, but they usually do it with the help of other people or a team of people. All right. So pros follow systems. They leverage systems. Pros also study and do research. They read books, okay? You got to study. Guess what? You can buy a man's life for $14.99 or $19.99 at Barnes and Nobles or on Amazon. You can literally pick a man's brain 
for $19.99 or less at, at Barnes & Noble. All right. Or now you can now you can listen to them for free on, on the audio book on Audible or Spotify. All right. So you can actually do that. So please, guys, if people are successful, study after them, do research, see what they're doing. OK. A third thing that, that professionals do is they have mentors and oftentimes they have more than one. I got I got plenty of mentors. You know, I, I get new mentors all the time. Now, Tony and Kendra and, you know, they're, they're, they're mentors of mine, you know, and I, I get I get I, I take on new mentors all the time. You can take on a mentor by just simply reading their book. All right. You don't have to meet them. OK, so they have mentors and they have more than one. Find somebody who's successful, who's proven, who has the results. And you can you can take them on as a mentor. OK. And then um, you want to they pros also adapt and adjust to inevitable changes. They're flexible. Changes are going to happen. They're inevitable. You better adjust to them, guys. All right. They, they may change the comp plan. They may, they may change this. They may change that. You know, COVID-19 happened. Everybody had to adjust. We had to stop doing uh, in-person meetings and we had to switch to Zoom. You got to change. You got to adjust. You got to be adaptable. Okay. And so you got to make sure that you, that, you, that you do that. So adapt and adjust to inevitable changes. Okay. And flat out, guys, number five, flat out, pros solve problems. If you don't take anything away from me but this, take this statement away. He who solves problems gets paid. And when I say he, I'm talking, I'm, that's, that's including the masculine and the feminine, all right? He who's, I'm just talking about mankind in general. He who solves problems gets paid. He who causes problems gets anti-paid, all right? And so, so it's, you take that for what it is, all right? He who solves problems gets paid, all right? All right, guys. Um, let's see here. What's, they figure it out, guys. There's, uh, they, and not necessarily on their own. I understand that people, successful people do come up with new things. A lot of times they come up with new procedures or, or ways to do things, but they, most of the time they didn't come up with it just by themselves. Okay. Yeah. They figure some things out on their own, but they also, they solve problems. They, 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 they walk in a, a, a trail that's already blazed. Okay. That's, that's the, that's the, that's the better way to do it. And in this, in, that, in this um, industry, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. People are, people have come, plenty of people have come in before you and have been successful in network marketing. A plethora of people have come in before you and are successful at FES. Do what the successful people do and you'll have what they have. Okay. That's simple, flat out. All right. Let's talk about mindset for a minute. All right. Skipping around. Hold on one second, guys. All right. Mindset. Let's talk. Mindset is very important. And a lot of times you, you ever hear those people want to skip. Oh, I want to skip all that. Yeah. Get, skip all the fluff. Get straight to the meat, the meat and potatoes. No. You need to stop for a minute. You need to eat on. You need to chew on some of the vegetables for a minute. All right, um, and that's and that's and especially that's talking about mindset. Before you do anything, you need to get your mindset straight. Okay, so what do you need to do? You need to read books. Or if you're not an avid reader like me, like I, I'm no longer. I used to read books a lot, but I'm no longer an avid reader. Um, I, I listen to audible books. I listen to audio books. Okay, so you need to at least be listening to books and podcasts or something. Doing some. If you're not reading, you better be watching YouTube videos and listening to audio in the car. Okay. All right. You also too, you, from my, to, to sharpen your mindset, you got to toughen up. I, I just don't have any other way to to uh, to really say it. You got you got to toughen up. Okay. Um, you got to quit crying and quit complaining. Okay. You got uh, number three. You got to control your emotions. Okay. You have you you literally have to control your emotions. Uh, Ashton Henry was talking about um, emotional intelligence on the uh, call uh, this past Sunday, guys, you got, you got to be able to, you know, there's such thing as called a, a, a IQ and there's such thing as EQ. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I'll talk about that in a minute, but you got to control your emotions. Okay. In, in business, I've seen so many people, business deals blow up over emotions where people could have got paid, but somebody was in their feelings and in their emotions. All right. So you got to be able to control your emotions. Okay. And then you got to develop that dog to win at all costs. You know, I wasn't a big Michael Jordan fan, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed watching the last dance where he was, um, he was doing, um, you know, uh, where they were doing that documentary on him and, and watching that series. Because one thing, one thing with like Michael Jordan, like him, love him, lump him, or hate him, or whatever. One thing you can't say is he ain't had that dog. He had the dog. I'm telling you, he would take your throat out. All right. And so you got to develop that dog. Why? So you can win at all costs. Okay. And then number uh, fifth thing you want to do with mindset is you want to increase your emotional and your business intelligence. These are real things, guys. All right. And it, so, for so long, people have thought that uh, book or academic intelligence translated over to business intelligence. It really doesn't. 
academic success does not translate over to business success. They're, two, they're on two different planes, okay? So you wanna increase your emotional and business intelligence, all right? Guys, winning is not a suggestion, it's a command. The very first words that mankind heard from, uh, 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 from God in the Bible, in, in Genesis chapter, uh, chapter one, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. That was not a suggestion from God, that was a command, okay? So winning is not a suggestion, guys, it's a command, all right? All right, let's talk about emotional intelligence uh, for a minute here very quickly. Um, I'm not the biggest uh, pro on this, but I'll just brush on it uh, quickly from what I do know. Uh, you know, there's such thing as IQ, you know, your, your intelligence quotient or whatever. There's also such thing as EQ your, that measures your emotions, okay? As a, as a professional business person, you have to possess or learn the ability to get along with people. We're in network marketing, guys. You have to be able to get along with people. People are your biggest form of capital. Okay, people are your biggest form of capital. You have to learn how to get along with people. Okay, if you're always fighting and feuding with people and stuff like that, you're just not going to make it in business. You might as well just give it up. Just be a, a W two employee somewhere. Keep working for Mr. Gilmore because if you if you uh, if you can't get along with people or learn how to get along with people, and watch this, not even just get along, be pleasant, kind, and go the extra mile like Chick fil A does. My pleasure. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got, to, you got to learn that. You can, you know, you know, there's Chick Fil A and there's Popeyes. You know what I'm saying? You know, and if you, you know, you can, you can you take it for, what, leave it, take it for what it is. You got to go that extra mile sometimes. And sometimes you got to be pleasant. You got to smile, and you, and you got to, you got to go above and beyond sometimes when it comes to customer service because we're in a customer acquisition and customer retention and customer service business. Okay, so yeah, you got, you got, to, you got to cater to your customers sometimes. And guess what? It's okay. It's the right thing to do. All right. And it's not always what you do. Sometimes, sometimes it's about how you do it. Two people can say the same thing and say it a different way and have two different results. Okay. So yeah, you don't always have to kiss up, kiss up to people. We're not saying that, but at the same time, you got to be pleasant guys. And it's not, it's not always what you do, but it's also how you do it. All right. That's the, that's the key to becoming a professional. Okay. Also, you got to be able to emotional intelligence. You got to be able to assess situations, cause effect, the difference. Something may happen one, one day, one way, and then something may change and, it, and you may get a different result the other way. You got to be able to adapt to that. You got to be able to assess what caused Tuesday's result and then what caused Wednesday's result. And you got to be able to assess that and be okay with it, okay? Um, you can't just be all rigid and, you know, well, I call customer service and I, it only took me five minutes the first time and I call customer service today and it took me 45 minutes. Well, guess what? Something changed. And you got to be able to assess that and adjust to that and be okay with it, okay? Because things happen. That's why you have, having a high business acumen is the ability to discern cause and effect, why something happened, assessing why it happened, maybe being able to avoid it next time, or maybe be able to approve on it the next time, all right? So guys, you got you to be able to assess that type of stuff, okay? All right, let's keep it going. All right, business intelligence, guys. This is one of the things that, 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 is, that, is, that is real serious when it comes to owning a business. It's business intelligence, okay? You got to be able to, first thing you got to do is get past the fantasy versus the reality stage, all right? You got to know in business, you, you got to work, okay? Uh, you know, that's, and that's, that's one of the pipe dreams that people sell when it comes to network marketing that, oh, you just get in, pay your money and, you know, do a little bit of stuff and you're just going to have all this money come in. No, it's not going to happen like that, okay? You got to get to work. OK, so you got to get past that fantasy stage. OK, that, you know, you got to grow, too, as well. you got to be able to you got you got to know that you're going to you're going to have to grow. All right. So you got to um, you got to get past the fantasy stage. You got to know the difference between also you got no difference between self-employed and entrepreneur. So many business people think that because they start their own business, that they're a business owner or entrepreneur. And that's not the case at all. There's a difference between self-employed where you basically you own a job. OK, yeah, you may have gone from the W-2 job to your own job now but where you own the job but as a self self-employed is still on the left side of the quadrant y'all know the quadrant i'm talking about the robert kiyosaki the the esbi employee self-employed then business then investor the 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 self-employed is still on the left side of the quadrant okay and so you got why because if they stop working then they stop getting paid okay but an entrepreneur is somebody who leverages people and leverages systems okay a business is something that that actually employs a system in place where, you know, you may be getting 1% of 100 people's efforts versus 100% of your own efforts, 
okay? And so um, you got to know the difference between self-employed and entrepreneur. Here in, in network marketing, we leverage, a, we leverage people and we leverage systems. We leverage a system of other independent businesses to help our business grow. And it's a great system. All right. Um, so um, you got to know the difference between being self-employed and an entrepreneur. And then the option to quit, guys, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller every day you, you go in. And that actually, it should really, it should be diminishing. OK, the option to quit, the luxury to quit, you know, um, you know, because you're not maybe you're not measuring by the right measurements or, you know, you feel you're talking like an amateur again. Oh, it's not working. No, the option to quit has got to got to diminish. OK, and quitting just really can't be a can't be an option. All right. And growth is not optional, guys. If you're going to be in this business, you're going to have to grow. If you don't if you didn't like talking to people before this business, you're going to have to learn how to talk to people. If you didn't like uh, asking for money like I did, I didn't like I didn't like I would I would do this wonderful presentation. I mean, I would I would I'd rock the house and then I'd be afraid to ask for the money at the end. And then they, I, I let them walk right on out the door. But then I realized one day. As when I go to Chick-fil-A, when I go to Starbucks, if I go to Burger King, if I go wherever, they don't got no problem asking me for my credit card. How are you going to pay today, sir? And so with that being, with that being said, okay, cool. I, Chick-fil-A doesn't have any, I go to Chick-fil-A often. Chick-fil-A that has no problem asking me for my money. So if you're going to be in business, you can't have any problem asking for the money. You got to close, okay? It's part of the business, okay? And it's not wrong to do that, all right? Okay, so let's talk real quick. Let's talk about the three stages of business development in FES. Now we're going to get FES specific, okay? And then we're going to turn it over to Miss Aisha Betancourt. All right, guys. Uh, phase one, what the, stage one is this is kind of when you're like an agent, field trainer, CEO, field trainer. Stage one is that you're going to make a list of 100 people and you're, going, and you're going to send that list to your upline, your upline SD or VP. You're going to make a list of 100 people and send that to the person that who brought you into the business or your or your upline. Okay, you're going to make a list of 100 people. Then what are we going to do in the startup phase? The second thing we're going to do is we're going to run 100 people through the PS3 funnel or system. Okay, all we're really doing is sorting, guys. Okay, and this is where you're, it's important to have your emotions in check because when you get the nose and you will get the nose, you're not emotionally detached attached to it. OK, you got to be emotionally detached. Don't be. Oh, they told me no. And it's just then another no, then another no. And then the next thing you know, man, you out the game. No, -uh. you got to get through those no's so you can get through the yeses. You have to expect the no's and you have to be OK with the no's. OK, so we're just literally running 100 people through a PS3 system and we're sorting them out. This person is hot, warm, cold. OK, cool. All right. And you got to be able to live with that. OK, and then we got to close them when we're closing everybody. We're closing the agents. We're closing the customers and we're closing the referral sources. Refer referral sources will give us three to five referrals and they'll make some Facebook posts for us. They'll make at least three Facebook posts for them, especially if you waive their customer fee. If you waive their activation fee, you, that's, that's three posts. That $99 activation fee or that, or that $49 discount, that costs you three posts. All right. So you're going to make some, you're going to make some posts for me. Okay. Somebody said PS3. What's that? PS3. Peak, share, three-way call or third-party webinar. Okay, I'll say it again. Peak their interest through a very simple, non-intrusive question. We ask a question. You know anybody wants to make any, uh, you know anybody's got bad credit or may want to make some extra money? Or if I can show you a way how to improve your credit potentially at no cost um, and, and potentially make some additional income, would you take a look at some information? We're asking some non-threatening questions. That's where peaking their interest. That's the P. The S is we're sharing information. Don't be talking about the business. Send them them videos. Them four-minute videos do, can talk way better than you can, okay? So we're going to share the information. And the third thing we're going to do, we're either going to get them on a three-way call or a third-party webinar, okay? And then from there, and then what are we going to do after that? We're going to close them. We're going to close them, okay? How are you going to be paying today, sir? Hey, you have, that was some powerful information, wasn't it? You got, you got any more? Uh, what would you like best about it? Cool. You got any more questions? You got any questions about it? No, I think I'm good. I think I understand everything. Great. W would you like to get started? How are you going to be paying? You see what I'm saying? You got to close. Okay. So you have to close. All right. And uh, they're either going to be agents, customers, or referral sources, but we're closing everybody. Okay. All right. Phase two. This is your sustainment phase. Guess what? Now you're past the fantasy. You're past the honeymoon stage. All the kissy kissy. Moo, moo, moo. Oh, you pass all that now. Guess what? Reality starts to set in, okay? This is the sustainment phase, okay? This is where you have to maintain your business through customer service. You have to focus, you have to now switch to adding customer retention to your repertoire, 
Okay, you got to you got to call your customers. You got to service them. You got to see how they're doing. You got to make sure are they following the process. You got to maintain business through customer service. Okay, you don't have to do the heavy lifting. You can let our customers. You can let the UCES uh, customer service do most of that. But you still have to now. You have to maintain your customers and serve your customers. Okay. Also, too, you got to now learn company policies and compensation plans. I thought I was going to get paid a hundred dollars every time I brought in an agent. Well, you got to learn the difference between the remaining and the initial, okay? You have to learn the compensation plan. So you guess what? You got to read two pages out the manual to understand the compensation plan, okay? So you have to learn the company policies. You got to learn about compliance and things. What's compliant, what's not compliant. Compensation plans because you're a business person, okay? And then this, and then this is the beginning stages of becoming a leader. And leadership is the highest paid position in our company leadership you have to now become a leader okay you're kind of in the middle phases of things all right where um this is the stage where you make the decision to grow okay and you, you got to improve the things or the skills that you weren't good at before okay i wasn't good at closing and asking people for money guess what i have, I have i've had to improve on closing and asking people for money now i'm like hey man which, which way are you gonna pay partner you know what i'm saying and let's let's get you going okay so uh leader this is where leadership class is now in session guys okay you now are entering the phases of having or being forced to become a leader. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't become a leader and you don't learn how to maintain your, your customers, learn company policies, compensation plan, and you don't become a leader, guess what? You're not going to get out of the sustainment phase. You're not going to get past the SD, RSD, and ESD in most cases if you don't learn how to become a leader. Okay? All right. And then the third phase is going to the top because that's where we all want to go. We want to all get to VP and above. We're going for seniors and pinnacles and that type of thing. We want to get to the top, all right? So this, this is, and, and some of these phases kind of overlap a little bit because you really want to start strategizing for VP in um, really kind of out the gate, but definitely in the sales director, regional and executive sales director, you want to start strategizing for VP and above, okay? You want to start positioning your legs and that type of thing, okay? So you want to position your business for wealth management at the same time, because guess what? Um, when, you, when, you're, when, you're, when you start making that ESD money and stuff like that, and, and, um, you, and you, got, you got money coming in, you, you got to go talk to a tax professional. You shouldn't be going to H&R Block or Jackson Hewitt any longer to do your taxes unless they understand business taxes, okay? But you gotta you got find you now a CPA or somebody who does taxes. You gotta start positioning yourself for wealth management to enter the six-figure stage in the, in the seven-figure stage, okay? So you gotta position your business for wealth management and um, you know, structuring, do you need an LLC? You don't always need one in this case, you know? Um, so I'm not saying you have to go out and get an LLC, but I'm just saying these are things that you need to think about. You need to start thinking about positioning yourself to go to the top, all right? And then you gotta start establishing relationships with, um, with the, uh, with, the comp with company and co corporate, all right? Corporate leadership, all right? In order to add value, okay? Because you wanna be bringing value to the company. And so you gotta start thinking about how, what kind of value now can I bring to the company and the corporate level, okay? So that's, but that's at VP. But uh, why am I mentioning these things? Because this, we're, we all plan on going there, all right? So these are things that you need to start thinking about right now and start preparing yourself for and strategizing for right now, all right? Okay, all right, at this time, guys, um, I'll, uh, if, if you have any questions, if you have one or two questions, I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it about 60 seconds or so. Go ahead and unmute your mic and ask your questions now because we want to get on to the second part of the training uh, with the lovely Miss Aisha Betancourt. So does anybody, uh, does anybody have any questions before we move on to the second part? Or you can also, if you want to ask it at the end, you can. Um, but if you have any questions about the first part, go ahead and speak now or we're going we're to continue to move forward. Going once, going twice. All right. Boom, I have the awesome opportunity now to uh, introduce to you uh, uh, a, a wonderful woman who's taught me a lot in this business. When I first met her back in uh, July of 2019 down in Tampa, I mean, uh, her and her team, they just embraced me like I was family, all right? And um, I mean, she's just, she's, she's a wonderful wife uh, to, uh, to Mr. Jean Velez. She's a wonderful mother. She has uh, some beautiful children. Uh, she's, uh, she's doing over 50 K in sales a month as an executive sales director, soon to be VP in our company. Uh, she just has a, her, but one thing I love about her, she has a beautiful spirit. You can discern the beauty in her spirit, not only her outward beauty, but her inner beauty. You can discern it too as well. So at this time, without further ado, I want to introduce to you guys, the lady who's going to do the second part of our training, executive sales di director, Aisha Betancourt. Aisha, are you there? I am. Can you guys hear me today? We can hear you. 
awesome. Oh my God, that was some amazing information that you shared tonight. Listen, if you guys got some value from that, I want to see someone in the chat. Cause you know, we all about energy here guys. And I know Ivan took out of his time today and just literally poured so much to us. And if you guys, if anything that you guys didn't take tonight, one thing I'm going to say is he said, amateurs and pros continue to think about amateurs and pros and we should all want to become professionals in this business. So Ivan, I just want to say thank you so much for having this amazing platform for all of us superstars to get together and just share information amongst all of us, right? Uh, thank you for putting this all together. Thank you for uh, inviting me on the call tonight. It's always an honor to serve the team and just being there just to, you know, give back. Um, so a lot of you guys, some of you guys know me, some of you guys don't. And uh, I'm just gonna share my story just a little bit. I'm not gonna take too long for you guys here. I know our calls are being recorded, uh, but just, uh, just like I've and said, guys, uh, my name is Aisha Bettenford. I'm currently an executive sales director with this company. Been with this amazing, phenomenal company for two years. And when I tell you guys that this company has literally transformed the entire dynamic of my household, guys, believe me, it has definitely done that, guys. Um, have a background in property management, coming from the apartment industry, being in the industry for a little over 10 years. Guys, I got tired of living somebody else's dreams and fulfilling somebody else's goals, okay? I just wanted more in life, okay? In the midst of me just trying to figure out what I wanted to do, guys, life just kept happening guys i ended up finding out that my dad was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer that was extremely difficult for me guys because my mom passed away when i was two years old okay and so my father he was my hero he was my everything i wanted to be there to honor him so i go to human resources explain the situation to them they quickly told me that the owners on the property were indicted and my position was at a higher demand guys i've never graduated from college guys had a baby when i was 19 years old didn't have a backup plan this company right here, this opportunity became my backup plan. This company has given me the time and the freedom that I was looking for. And if I can do this, anybody on this call can do this, guys. And so I'm just really excited to share with you guys a couple of nuggets um, you know, that I have learned throughout my process and through my journey. But one thing I would tell you is stay connected to your mentors. Stay connected to your mentors because they're like time machines. <laughs> They're literally like time machines. And you know, I enjoyed the call with uh, Ashton Henry this past weekend and he talked about the turtle and the giraffes, right? And so the angles of the views are just totally different. <laughs> and so this is why I encourage you to stay plugged into your mentor, stay plugged into the system. Don't duplicate the system, just follow it. If you're gonna copy anybody, copy the leaders. Copy. We're totally okay with that, right? Um, so, Ivan, did you want me to share my screen so I can go ahead and just uh, move it along? All right. If you could just give me the permission for that. Awesome. Let me go ahead and just share this screen right here, guys. And let me go to present. And Ivan is just so awesome. We could always count. I am. I know. I was like, Ivan, I need this. I need that. And how he just sets everything up. And I just love that, man. Oh, my goodness. I just love it. Okay. So guys, let's talk about um, income producing activities. How many times are we always talking about, you know, what are we doing to build our business? You know, a lot of times I talk to teammates and they're like, Aisha, I just really don't know what I'm supposed to be doing throughout the day. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be doing trial runs, right? We got all that great information um, from Ivan, right? But then like, they're like, what else can we do to actually build our business? Um, so I want to talk about this weekly schedule. And I also want to talk about these players club. If you guys want to learn how to make $500 on a weekly basis, let me see some 500s on the chat. Who wants to make $500? Anybody want to make 500? Okay, I see Thedra. I see you. All right, she's like, double up. Okay. <laughs> well, guys, let me show you how to do that and how to keep track, guys, of your leads, which is going to be extremely important. So, your weekly schedule, what I love about this new weekly schedule here is that here you have your daily uh, activities that you should be doing. Of course, you want to make sure that first thing in the morning you are posting something motivational, right? Nobody wants to see credit first thing in the morning when you're working your business. Post some motivational, post some credit, post some opportunity and lifestyles, everything. If you're on this call, you're an agent, 
you should be videotaping like five seconds of this call. This is your lifestyle <laughs> at this point right now. You should be taking some pictures of yourself on here, get your family, get your friends, take pictures. This is your lifestyle, guys. And so people want to see what you're doing on a consistent basis. So what I like about this particular schedule here is that we show you how to work this business in a part-time basis, but we can also show you how to work this on a full-time basis. Okay, so if you're working this business part time, of course, this is some of the things that you could do on a weekly basis. And we're going to dive into this in just a moment. But think about this. If you're working this business full time, you're quarantined home still, you haven't gone back to work just yet. Listen, you guys can do this. Take the weekly out, slash it out, put daily. <laughs> you can literally do this every day. Now, let me hop on to this players club. How many no's does it take for you to get the sale? Do you know? Does everybody know what their closing ratio is? Because I know when baseball players are, I'm not good with sports here, but I know when baseball players are playing, right? You know, it takes a couple of times for them to practice, for them to get that batting going, right? Over time, they're going to already know right through that process what they what they need to do how much time of training they got to do to actually really make it further to the leagues they're consistently training right they're consistently working on themselves so you got to think about how many leads does it take for you to close so what i like to do with these players because i like to print out two i like to have one for agents right and one for customers i want to know how many agents it takes for me to talk to to close and how many customers it talks for me to close so guys what you can do here on a weekly basis, yes, weekly basis, anytime someone comments customer you know, information or comments agent for credit information, uh, for agent opportunity, you wanna make sure you put their name, their telephone, and the date that you spoke with that individual or that they provided that information to you, right? Put all that information in there. Out of those 50 people that you speak with, and, and notice I'm saying 50, because I could speak to an agent that says, Aisha, I spoke to like, oh my God, I spoke to everybody. And they just said no. And I'm like, well, well, well who is everybody? <laughs> who is everybody? Let me see your players club so we can look at who everybody is. And everybody was like four people or eight people or nine people. No, guys, we, this is a numbers game, right? So we got to be exposing this opportunity all the time. It may take you to talk to 20 people. Ooh, I'm not sure how this thing just went back. Let's go back here. It may, sorry, it may take you to talk to 20 people to get one customer. And that's okay. Because as you start getting better on your scripts, as you start developing, listen, what I love about network marketing is literally you're getting paid to grow. <laughs> Like for real, like you're getting paid to grow. Like who does that? Like our opportunity does that. And so it may take you 20 people initially to close on one, but it's okay. Because guess what? Maybe in the next week, it might just take you 15. It might just take you 11. And it's just do that same process, right? So if you talk to or expose yourself or get about 50 leads, and I'm talking names, telephone numbers, not did just someone just comment. No, what's their name? And you actually communicate it, right? And then um, you move them. So you put their name. Let's say like you communicated with Lisa for credit. So you put Lisa Jane, uh, Jane here. Put a phone number in there. Well, guess what? Now Lisa, she, we're doing what? The PS3 system. <laughs> I mean, guys, literally, that's exactly what we're doing, right? We're just picking the interest on that post, right? And we're also sharing the opportunity and then we're gonna jump into that three way. So when you move, so what you do is you'll put Lisa Jane here. And then now that Lisa is ready for you to share the opportunity or get on the phone with you as a customer, you move her down here to your 15. So you go from your 50 leads to move them to 15, right? And now let's just say we were able to close on Lisa. Guess what we do? We move her down here to final close. So it, it takes for you to actually speak to 50 people, for you to actually get about 15 people to peak interest, to close on five. That's $500 on a weekly basis. That's how you do it. If you want to make $1,000, you should be filling out two of these forms for the week. And we're just talking straight customers here, straight agents, depending on your title, you could definitely generate more than that, right? But if you were just an agent, a beginner, right? And we all start there as beginners, right? You wanna generate $500, how many leads do you have? Is your players club filled up? Do you have at least 50 leads? Did you at least get 15 people 
out of those 50 people on the up with your phone with it with your upline or uh at a presentation or did they watch a video something was exposure happening there and then did you close on them so um i like to do that for agents and customers and separate and just see where my ratio is at and it's interesting because in certain seasons i kind of notice where it kind of goes up and down and so um you i challenge you to really do that and keep track you know a lot of times when i'm speaking to my teammates if they tell me aisha i spoke to so and so i want to see a players club where's your players club you can't tell me you got a whole bunch of no's if you don't got a players club let me see it so this weekly schedule right here guys you guys want to start adding at least 25 new uh friends on facebook and that's important because you know why we're constantly exposing our business right but we got to make sure we're changing our audience it's kind of like the channel you got to change it up a little bit right you know commercials you may see the same commercial in multiple channels because they're actually marketing themselves in multiple audience think about that it's the same thing with you you got to be able to do that and then you want to start deleting some people i'm gonna encourage you to start deleting some people seriously like for real for real delete some people if people are seeing your information consistently and they're not comedy they got to go so start cleaning that out if you're going to add 25 new friends delete 25 new friends okay now also the same thing with instagram now instagram is a little bit different i'm going to show you guys kind of like what i do on instagram at times to build um you know my followers as well attend your weekly trainings well we have trainings every Monday, right? Billionaire Mindset, we shall be plugged in at nine o'clock. And then we have our amazing team training here on Tuesdays at six o'clock. So here we go. We got two, two days out of the week where we can get some great training. And then we also got uh, Sundays as well, right? Um, so I mean, definitely you wanna stay plugged in. So um, when it comes to Facebook and Instagram, introducing yourself is important. We talked about, you know, if you're going to be, um having 25 new people that are going to join you go into their messenger introduce yourself who are you thank them for following you. these are some simple scripts you guys can follow you guys i don't know if you guys want to take screenshots if you're on the phone um or i know this is being recorded so you guys can always go back if you need me to put some of these scripts in the group let me know but this is a simple script hello i like to introduce myself as you can see my name is aisha put your name on there i'm a businesswoman first my first priority is my family my second priority is helping families if you want to learn how to increase your credit score to purchase a new home card to a business loan or maybe you're just interested in adding additional streams of income if so message me me back oh i almost forgot check out my page from time to time if you need something to lift you up after a long day right and then we put our schedule uh consultation link as well as our website link right there so every time someone brand new is following me i am sending them this message i am introducing myself to them so make sure you do that okay guys and then this i love this this i do on instagram you guys i think you guys are really like this so this is a, a different way, a different approach that I use. Um, I like to go into big influencers, or I may go into like, uh, you know, P Diddy, or I may go to, um, you know, someone of a big status, Oprah, right? And so what I do is I go to their followers, I start sending their followers requests, but I also start messaging their followers. And I just say, hey, my name is Aisha. I see we have similar interests. We're both following Oprah, right? I'm a businesswoman first, right? Um, and then uh, we talk, and then you just use the same script right there. My second priority is helping families. Do you guys see how you guys can leverage your Facebook, but also leverage other influencers? What followings? And believe it or not, guys, trust me, you'll have people to start following you back, which is super cool. It's a good way of also exposing your business and growing your following. So let's talk about getting consistent when it comes to um, Instagram. And I can really speak about Instagram because that's kind of like my big base there. I do utilize Facebook from time to time, but um, investing in yourself is huge. You gotta put in to get out. It's impossible to have a business and you're not investing in yourself in some shout outs some promotional ads, some sponsor ads, you gotta get that going. But everybody always says, Aisha, how do I decide on a budget? It's simple, what's your title? If you're an agent, you know that you should be doing about a hundred bucks on a weekly basis when it comes to promotions. If you're a senior field trainer, right? You should be doing a little bit more. If you're a sales director, you should be doing what? 380, if you're, you know, et cetera, depending upon your title or promotion. So um, setting up a schedule once or a schedule system to follow up with your leads are very important it's going to eliminate time 
um, a lot of times it becomes challenging to just sit there and go back and forth in an inbox like, hey, you're interested in credit. Um, when is a good time to follow up with you? And then maybe you have a form and then you have four or five, four o'clock. Like it's just a mess. So it's best to have a schedule system where you say my availability is from nine to nine and they can actually go in there and schedule that up. Um, find sponsor pages on Instagram, influencers. Um, a lot of times people are just so focused on these reality pages, but there's so much more. What about these celebrity pages? What about fitness pages? I mean, we're hitting the summer right now, right? Most people are looking at what, like losing weight? What about those type of pages? What about single mom pages? What about love? Let's, let's start, because you, once you start looking at those type of influencers, then you'll start knowing what type of people will start following. You'll be able to attract your tribe, right? So when you do a lot of the reality pages, a lot of times when you're doing those calls, you're not always closing 100% of the time because we're, we're, where we're actually marketing at. Think about that. You want to make sure that you're looking at who, you're, who is marketing your page. Set up appointment responses, right? Um, which this is a great example right here. If someone comments info on my Instagram, um, you know, for credit, I just pretty much send them this information. Thanks for responding to my post. It's my pleasure to service you. Let's schedule some time to discuss. They go on my schedule. They schedule a time that fits best for them. And then we actually get on the call there. Call your appointments. I know some people are see appointments and they may get scared and they're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Listen, practice on that protection plan script. And go out there and make a mistake. It's okay. Trust me. I remember the first time I read a promo, <laughs> I spoke to like 60 people and everybody said no. I had to reevaluate myself, get with one of my mentors, reevaluate myself and say, hey, what am I doing wrong? I started so robotic. I mean, I was just like all over the place. And it's okay because guess what that taught me? That taught me that I had to get stronger. That taught me that I had to build my confidence, right? And so all those things you start learning within your, I love this business. I mean, self-development is all over the place, right? <laughs> If y'all would have met me two years ago, this girl right here would not even be doing this right now. <laughs> so attend your weekly events. So of course, we can't go to no local events at the moment, but eventually when we start going to local events, you want to make sure that you're present. You want to make sure that you're there. Um, and trigger your calves every Monday before 2 p.m. <laughs> Seriously, I, if you don't know what that is, get with the person that brought you into the business. That's a whole separate training on triggering calves right there. But that is something that you wanna make sure that you are checking off and you are being cautious with there. So shout out messages. If you want to uh, send a message out to an influencer, these are a couple of messages you guys can um, take from in there. Um, what, whichever one you want, these are some options right there. And then um, ask your followers to post for you. That's huge. Yes, trial runs are important, but what I like to do is get into the messenger. Uh, you know, if you go on Facebook Messenger, you go to the chats, you see everybody who's green, who's there, who's up, right? You can see who's active, right? Send them a message. Hey, with your permission, I'd like to post something. I need your help. Actually, post it on your wall, but go into your messenger. And believe me, if I've gone to your messenger a couple of times and you can't post for me, then I'm getting rid of you. Because obviously we're not connecting, right? I need to go continue to find my tribe. And now you can start eliminating some people on your social media if they can't assist you, right? Um, also, how many people um, do you put on a trial uh, run on a weekly basis? Everybody should be putting about five or more on a weekly basis. It's always important to consistently have trial runs. And I know that RSD, uh, Ivan, always stressing that, guys. We got to make sure we're doing trial runs. They're free leads. Um, are you checking your messages on Facebook? Let me tell you something. I don't, I don't even know what happened. I'm going to confess and tell you guys, I was horrible at that. I'm going to tell you why. I ended up creating an Instagram page, which was a business page, then converted the Instagram page automatically created a Facebook page, a business page for me. And so I didn't realize that there was a different way of going into messengers and actually taking a look at all those business uh, messages and inquiries I was getting. And it was months later to I fig finally figured out I apologized to everybody and of course gave them the information. So be very aware of all of your messages from many different uh, directions. I'm um, seeing your affirmations. You know why I'm big on affirmations, guys? Because we all have challenging days, right? We all have days that we're going through something. And one thing I learned about this business is that Every challenge and every obstacle that I have faced throughout this process has always been the same question for me is how bad do you really want this, Aisha? 
So I know that if I ask myself that, when I'm going through challenges and difficulties, I am sure that everyone on this call must ask themselves that as well, right? Especially if you're new to network marketing, you're like, what am I doing wrong? I have spoken to certain people before. They're like, man, I was just always getting... Uh, I was like the number one salesperson in insurance or this and that. And, you know, they got to have to switch their mindset <laughs> when it comes to, uh, you know, entrepreneurship, especially in network marketing. So this is a great affirmation. You guys can say, take a few of these, take a screenshot of it. Listen, print them out, put it on your mirror. Affirmations are extremely important because it's going to rewire your brain. <laughs> Like literally rewire your brain and your thinking, guys. And that's going to be extremely important in your success in this business. So um, I am pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oh, hold on. How do I stop, stop this share and pass this call to our amazing RSD, Ivan Brown, on his way to ESD. And all the time I see him, I'm like, nah, he's not going ESD. He's like jumping straight to VP. <laughs> so I appreciate you so much. You guys all have an amazing uh, rest of the day. Oh my gosh, that I mean that just literally you just literally dropped the mic, okay? With that with that training, Aisha, thank you so much uh, for your uh, your your willingness to just you know get on and help us all with that. Uh, a lot of us, you know, are some of us are new to social media, but you know, and and just you just laying it out a to a b c on how to do it, how many posts to make per week, what times to make them. I mean, gosh, it, it doesn't get any plainer than that. So I mean, just you did a you did a, you did a marvelous job uh, on presenting that. So thank you so much. We so appreciate you, ESD, for doing that. All right, guys, at this time, um, I want to, um, again, are, are there any questions? I want to open it up for any questions very quickly before we uh, hear from our, our amazing uh, executive vice president who's on the line here. So um, is there anybody that has any questions before we, okay, I just see one here. What title we need to hit to get invited to the theater? Oh, man, I think they ain't a real question. French got me on that one, okay? <laughs> hey, hey, uh, hey you, you don't need no title for that. So, hey, Diane, you got a question? Yes, um, okay. I, I heard uh, I heard you guys speak about the no's, but what about uh, the people that um, reach out and say info or how or whatever, and when you um, and they and they give they give that number, but then when you contact them, they don't answer. What do you do uh, with those filters? I'm gonna, those I'm gonna yield to the ESD on that. Go go ahead. You want to answer that, uh, Aisha? When, okay, well, you can make sure I understood your question, Diane. It was when you people who have con sent info and you share the information with them, but they don't reach back or they don't they don't get back to you at that point. Yes, and also, what about the ones that um, say info and then you respond to them and they they don't want to give up their information? Do you just uh, delete them or what is what is uh, what is the suggestions for that? It's it's two questions I have. One for uh, when they respond and say, I want more info or agent. And then when you, when you give them the script and you respond back to them, some of them don't want to give up the info. I mean, I understand it's a social media, but if you're reaching out, you gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta give up the information at some point in time. And then the other thing is some of them, they give up the number. And then when you contact them, they're not available. They don't answer at no point in time. Follow up, no answer. Go ahead, Aisha. I'll let you take first step at that. All right. So, uh, Diane, that was a loaded question. <laughs> Good question, though. So I'm just trying to, all right, let's, let's start with the first question. So I, I believe the first question, what you were trying to say is, what happens when um, you have someone that you've contacted and then uh, they don't answer, right? Was, was, that, was that your first question? Yeah, well, the first question was they respond, they want info, agent, you respond to them through IG on a, a direct messenger, and then you might, and then you want to, I mean, I, I ask them their name, and then I say, well, for, you know, for I also offer to send them the information, but they just don't respond, they don't want to give up their name or anything, they just don't respond, so do you just filter those out, and then for the other ones that do give the number, I, I, I schedule a time to call them. And at that time, when I call them, they don't answer. Okay, so for me personally, um, 
it depends which post you're talking about. Because if it's a customer, I don't go back and forth personally with them. I actually just send my link and it's just, hey, this is Aisha. Thank you for inquiring. Schedule your appointment. So they schedule an appointment with me. At that point, I'm eliminating that, right? Because remember, this is a numbers game. So I don't have time to go back and forth. Now, if we are talking about an agent, right? Or maybe you're interacting with somebody and they're not giving you the information. At the end of the day, I'm looking for coachable individuals right? I'm looking for people that are coachable. If you can't give me your name and your information, at the end of the day, this business may not just be for you. And so, yes, that actually goes towards the numbers as well. <laughs> so, you know, that goes on your list. You just keep moving and you move forward. Everybody is not going to, um, you know, always give you the information that you're asking for, whether it's name and all that. Sometimes people are like, how much is all this? And sometimes I'm like, listen, you know, uh, all the prices are different because I don't know if they necessarily need credit repair. They just may need credit my rent, but schedule an appointment with me and we'll be able to discuss. So eliminate the back and forth like that by having a schedule once. And if they're interested, we will, they will schedule that appointment. Um, hopefully that answered your question. Did that answer your question for you? Yes, very much. And one more quick question in reference to followers. I mean, not followers, but shout outs. How do you go about finding uh, an amenable one that, you know, that is decent or that you that you're not that you're not going to get beat beat by? That's a good question as well, because at times it may take you some time to find your right tribe. It's all about that, right? So sometimes I look at followers uh, or Instagram pages and they could have tons of followers but then their content and the follower amount, like, are they bought? I like to look at who else is following them. Are the pictures all white and there's a whole bunch of followers that they bought? Or did they post something on their page and a lot of people were interaction? So interaction is huge for me when I'm looking on Instagram. And you know what I would suggest to do, Diane? This is what I do. Um, you know, uh, working this business full time with three kids. A lot of times, listen, you got to do time management. This is what I do. I go on my bed at night, at midnight, and I'm sitting in there sending all the time new people. Hey, listen, this is Aisha. Do you do promos? Do the Send them to like 50 people. Out of those 50 people that you send it to, trust me, maybe like 10 or, or nine may respond. It's a numbers game too. Everything is a numbers game. Hopefully that answered your question. Yes, very much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. I can't hear anything. Yeah, we hear you. Okay, this question is for Aisha. Hi. Hey, how are you? Hi. I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Um, and yourself? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for asking as well. <laughs> You're very welcome. My question to you is, um, you, did, you, you didn't say it in this training, but you did a training on one of our Sunday calls, and you mentioned um, we were talking about branding. And you mentioned a site that you can use to get a logo. And I did not catch it. Yes. So I like to use Fiverr. It's F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. You can use that um, to do logos for yourself and also do flyers. Okay. Thank you. And, and I just put that in a chat box too, Fiverr.com. I just recently got a logo from there. Um, they do very great work. So you can go to Fiverr. Um, with two R's and they can and you can uh, get logos uh, and professional um, flyers and things from there too as well all right great Thank great you. question um, anybody got any other questions uh, before we turn it over anybody um, step up any questions all right going once going twice all right uh, at this time guys uh, I'll, I never want to close out um, a call without uh, yielding it to the mic to our amazing leader, our fearless leader of the Superstars Nation himself, hailing out of Detroit, Michigan, all right? Um, this guy is just, I mean, he's, he's, he's an awesome leader, an awesome mentor. He's won the co-founder award just recently at a, at, a, at a convention. And I mean, this guy is just amazing. So I'm without further ado, I'm just going to turn it over to Mr. Tony Camilleri, Executive Vice President, soon to be Senior Vice President. Are you there, Mr. Tony Camilleri? Yes, I am. Can you hear me, Ivan? Yes, we can hear you good, man. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, yeah, I'm not going to take a lot of time, but I'll tell you what, man, this was some good stuff. Unfortunately, I had to get off on a, uh, off the line a few times for some scheduled calls, but man, that, that was some powerful stuff, guys. And this is something, get your agents to watch this, okay? 
this was, I mean, Ivan uh, and I talked and Aisha as well about what they were going to discuss. I mean, this is just, I was like, this is so on point because I've been thinking about this for a while, but that's the great part about having amazing, talented people on your team is that they come forward and say, man, I got this, let's do it. And uh, I'm like, perfect timing. Guys, with this training right here um, is just, I think every person has to see this when they come in. This, this should be a requirement after we get to the initial videos uh, about the company and they can get familiar with the websites and all that and getting started. But this mindset on being a, a pro versus an amateur and the mindset of, of, of a business person, powerful. You know, guys, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've done a lot of different businesses outside of FES. And so, you know, that's something that I've, I, I come from that background and understand it. But a lot of people, we we're bringing people in and many of you may be coming from a job mentality where you know about going to a job where all you have to really do is just show up. You know, I did have a job so I can talk about it. You know, it's uh, you know, it's one of those things. I get it. I went to the corporate, went through corporate America and I realized people just 90% or probably 98% of people literally just show up, don't even think all day ever and just do their thing, go home, get their check problems come up. They're like, not my problem, not my company, but this is your company, right? We represent, we are, we have an ownership stake as contractors and, and as, as owners in the company. I mean, when the company's sharing back 65% of the money to us as agents, now, of course, you got to work to get up to that level where you're, you're, you're claiming that, that, that percentage, but you have the ability to do it with no capital investment, no liability. You're not taking any phone calls from attorneys. So you get the benefits of being a business owner without all the headaches, but the problem or challenge is, because we sign up for 288 and we're just an agent and we don't go to an office, we think that we take it lightly. And, you know, regional sales director Ivan Brown did an amazing job. I was, I'm going to go back and watch this because when I was on it, I was so upset when I had to take a call because it was such good stuff. Guys, I mean, please just take heed to the, all that information because if you really want to be successful, have time freedom and get all the benefits that FES offers, then you need to get the mindset and that will not happen overnight. This training will get you launched into the mindset so that you'll read the books and you are gonna study people. And as he said, get a mentor, right? Every successful person has a mentor at some level. I mean, I talked to Paramount Nike, guess what? He had mentors. Why did he become a multimillionaire at 19 years old? Because he had a mentor he was following in the stock market in Bombay. To, to guide him and direct him. He didn't just do that on his own, right? And so he followed other people and he's constantly done that. And look, you want Paramount Nike's money? I sure do. That's like, he's worth lots of money. <laughs> and, uh, but that's with anyone. So Ivan, I mean, man, that was good stuff. I do want to share one thing and I have to apologize to Ivan, right? Because I, we were talking about something and I forgot to email him. And I will tell you, I, we, you know, we get busy and I, I really, I, Ivan, I, I'm sorry for, for not sending that, but I'll go ahead and, and share it. I did, I was, I felt so bad when I got in here. I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot to send him this. So I'll, I'm just going to share this right now. Um, something that, oh, Ivan, is it possible to share my screen here? Let's see. Yes, um, you can share your screen. Uh -huh. Let me see here. Uh, just let me go back. Let me, okay. Yep. Got, Ivan and I were talking about this and um, I forgot to send him this email, but this is, guys, um, this is talking about, you know, so, I haven't talked about solving problems, right? And not complaining and just going, oh my God, this isn't right or that's not right. No, you are an owner. You, you can't complain. If you owned the company, who are you going to complain to? Like if you opened, um, you opened a service shop to, you know, oil change place and there was some problem that went on with the, with the who are you going to call? If you own the company and now the hoist isn't working to get the car up, are you going to go, oh my God, what do we do? The hoist isn't working. Like call Ghostbusters? Like who are you calling? Like you have to, you have to fix it. And so you want to have the same mindset here. Now, obviously we don't own the company per se corporate, but what you do is if you see a problem, you want to come with a solution. And so that's just kind of the mindset. But what I want to show you, can Ivan, can you see this? Are you yes, seeing Yes, we can. Face? We can see it. We can see it. Uh -huh. Okay. So guys, we all know that, um, you know, we're in a business that's highly regulated. And so the um, FES, uh, Mike Toloff and, and Paramount Nike, they, they sent out this letter and I just wanted to share this with you guys that the Federal Trade Commission right now is coming after network marketing companies, okay, multi-level, MLM, whatever you want to call it. And they've targeted several companies that have been on letters, you know, that have gone out to them with, with threats and they've had a second 
uh, second letters went out recently. Now we haven't been on that. We're not on, we weren't on the initial list or the second list. We haven't been targeted. We haven't been because we are doing things with compliance, right? But the reason I'm showing you this is because even myself being as in here as long as possible, or as, as long as I have, I've looked at some of the posts that get, you know, say, oh, we can't, we can't say that. I'm like, well, why? That doesn't seem so bad. Well, that's my point of view. The, we have to follow the Federal Trade Commission, which is the government that can shut us down. And so I want to show you this so you guys get an understanding when we're trying to get creative and create posts and you go, well, if it's not in the back office, let's just test it and try. Well, look at this, guys. This is, these companies are being threatened to be shut down or fined or suspended. And this is what they said. It's in red. It says there is a lot of people out there. Um, this is just a post that other companies have put out, okay? There is a lot of people out there who have lost income. It's not correct grammar for those of you that are falls, right? Obviously, it should be. There are a lot of people. But anyway, you may want to build a side income, you know, make $500 a month, $1,000 a month or more. There, are, there is no ceiling on this. Uh, whatever you want it to be, maybe it could cover one of your bills, like a car payment. That doesn't sound too, like, promising and all that or... But guess what it's doing? It's talking about money. It's saying specific amount of money and the Federal Trade Commission doesn't like it. Even though we may all say this post doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look like it's promising you anything. This is what they deem as they can shut you down with. So guys, it's so important to use what's in the back office. Here's another one. Enjoy more time and financial freedom. I can tell you there are both, they are both, well, this is all bad grammar, right? I can tell you, I can't even read this. They are both possible at the same time because I've been living that for the past eight years and it's wonderful to be able to offer that to other people. That is something that's being, that's being shut down. So these are saying income claims and they cannot be used to market any MLM opportunity. So guys, we are doing a great job overall, but I do know, and Mike says in this letter, we've seen a lot of these type posts out there. Understand something. As a business owner yourself, we are though a part of a company that we represent. When you do something that is not in the back office, you see this says no exceptions. Like you must use marketing materials in your back office. So when you get creative and type something up and you shoot it out there, I just need you guys to understand that you are at risk to be suspended and shut down. Now, not necessarily kicked out of the company because what they'll do, if you're obviously there's, a, there's policies and procedures as Ivan told you, you should have read, that will say, you get a warning. They're gonna shut you down. They're gonna you call them and they'll tell you why. And then you got your second chance and third chance or whatever. But understand, it's very serious. The company has to protect itself from being shut down. And these things right here have proven that what FES is doing is something that should be done to protect our company and your income. Understand, when you start making $1,000 a week, $2,000 a week, $5,000 a week, $10,000 a week, $30,000 a week. You don't want that to be taken away, right? And so it's very serious. So there are other agents that will probably report you. So you're not just trying to avoid corporate, you know, the couple people there that look at things. There are agents out there that are going to send you in because they don't want our company to be shut down and lose their income. So Guys, I just wanted to share that just to get you to understand because it opened my eyes because I kept thinking, well, this stuff isn't that bad. I see, you know, it's they're typing up some stuff, but it's putting us in jeopardy. And so we've got to be very careful. You need to go to the back office, look up in UCES and FES, use the, the posts that are there because you want to stay out of trouble. You just don't want to risk it. I mean, again, you get, you're not going to be kicked out of the company on your first offense, but if you're on, you know, you've already been shut down a three, four times or three times, probably, I think then the last next one, you could be out, right? That's the policy. So again, be a business owner, you know, protect the company, follow policies and procedures. It's there to protect us, your income so that we can be here for the long term, Guys, what we have gone through, understand we are just getting started. I mean, seriously, this pandemic, obviously we're coming, it's everything is opening up. The stock market's good. Everything is looking wonderful. But there's a couple things. A lot of people are still, they're gonna have a lot of marks on their credit. There was a lot of misinformation given during this pandemic financially. There are a lot of people that stop paying things that think that it's not gonna be a black mark on their credit, and it is, and they're gonna need our services. There are people that did suffer financially and they're trying to get back out of it. They, they will need us. There may be a second wave, right? There are gonna be some uh, uh, permanent layoffs and things like that. 
that people are going to be suffering. So we have an amazing opportunity and this is, we've got a, we've got a long way to go. We have a lot of people to help and um, you're in the right place at the right time. And so what I encourage you to do is to listen to this again, <laughs> let it sink in what, what both Aisha and Ivan talked to you about, because Ivan gave you some insanely amazing uh, nuggets on professionalism and handling as a business. And of course, Aisha came through and gave you some very specifics on what you should be doing to start your FES business. So you put those two, two things together, you are going to be successful as long as you keep the right mindset and you stay consistent with it. Um, I'm not sure because I didn't get to hear everything. The one thing um, that, that's, that's something I run into a lot, even with just calling realtors, um, calling even FES agents. Guys, you are a business owner. You are a professional. And I want you to think, leaving, having professional greetings on your voicemail, I believe is very important because think about this. You have a stranger that may get your number and call you and they want to get their credit fixed and you may very well be needing, you know, if you obviously enroll them, you're going to be getting their date of birth, social security number, address, and all this information. But if they answer and it says you've reached someone, you reached uh, voicemails not been set up or, you know, this is whatever, a computer voicemail, they're not going to have the confidence in you that they would have if you said, hi, you know, this is, this is Tony Camilleri, you know, um, with, you know, United Credit Education Services, or this is Tony Camilleri. If you're calling about credit restoration services, please leave a message. I'm not, you know, something to that effect. You're going to leave a professional message identifying yourself. You know, and now if you do multiple things, I understand you may not be able to say specifically credit repair. Now, some people I know with realtors say, hey, if you're calling about credit repair services or you're calling about, you know, purchasing a home or real estate related issues, you know, please leave a message. Or you may just say, this is, hey, this is Tony Camilleri. I apologize, I'm not able to make it, you know, be, uh, you know, take your call at this time, whatever you want to say, and at least identify yourself, at, tell them what they should do, leave a short message when you'll call them back. I know that's one thing I learned was saying, hey, you know, I, I've, if it's after six o'clock, I'll give you, you know, I'll return the call no later than tomorrow morning. You know, that way they know when you're going to call back because that gets frustrating and they may try to call somebody else that they find. So again, just a tip that I think is valuable because, you know, again, what, with what we're doing, when you call, if you call an attorney's office and they didn't have a voicemail, how confident would you be? It, you know what I mean? You, you want to know that that person is identified, but I, again, I know if you have multiple things, you may not be able to say credit repair services, at least identify yourself and tell, you know, give them an explanation. So I just think that any level of professionalism will just help you um, to gain more customers and confidence in your, in your customers and, and people you're dealing with. So even referral sources, things of that nature, if a realtor were to call you back, uh, they want to know, okay, is this person in business, right? And that's kind of a, a first sign. So that's their first impression, possibly if, if you've never talked to them before. But guys, that's my piece. I am so excited about this, man. I love the fact that we have leadership guys on our team. And, um, you know, I want to encourage all of you guys to as you're going through this process, if you see something that you'd like to share and you want to be, you know, get on and do a training, well, listen, that's something that we're going to encourage. We want everybody to develop. Like these two amazing professionals that you just heard from today, they just stepped up and did it. And that's what leadership's all about. You know what I mean? And I, I just want to applaud you guys. Thank you. You guys, I'll turn it back to you, Ivan. Thank you for, uh, you know, turn it over to me for a minute. Again, I apologize. I meant to send that to you earlier. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll be, uh, Seeing you guys at the top, push hard, take this stuff, put it into place. So let's finish this week strong. We've got some serious goals on this team and I want to help you guys to get them. And uh, this information will definitely help you get there. All right, Ivan, back to you. Thank you, Tony, man. We, we, and we see, that, we see that check right there that you're using as a pillow right behind your head. Uh, we, we can see that check there right there. <laughs> All right, that's great stuff, man. Thank you for uh, adding that, uh, that component. Uh, we, uh, it was definitely important. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you for attending uh, STU, Superstars Training University. And I guess we'll see you next week uh, at the same time, same bat channel. All right, uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time on the uh, Superstars Nation Zoom call. All right. All right, guys. Y'all have a fabulous evening. Go out there, crush your goals, crush your dreams, and make it happen, guys. All right. We love you, and nothing you can do about it. Okay. Y'all be blessed and have a great one. Thank you, Alvin. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Aisha.